and hear the voice of the Almighty. Every battle that comes against you, you shall be stronger than the enemy behind the mighty name of Jesus. I decree that this anointing shall be carried even in your house. It shall be carried even in your house. Shall be carried even in your house. Shall be carried even in your house. Your house shall be fuller of the divine presence. Huh? In juice of healing, you are healed. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. I see the angels of the Lord everywhere. Right now, I see the angels of the Lord effecting supernatural healing. I see the angels of the Lord everywhere effecting supernatural healing. We were created for dominion to rule the earth to manage and to be in charge. We see that assignment all the way from Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And he blessed them and said that be fruitful, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So that is the reason why man was created. So that he can be in charge of the world and to do it according to the design of God. In Psalms 15, 115 verse 16, Psalms 115 verse 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The heaven and the heavens, that is God's business. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. So whatever that happens on the face of the earth, it is not God to blame. It is a question whether the children of men have taken charge the way God has given them to deal with it. Most of the wrong things that are happening on the face of the earth is because man has lost his place of dominion. It is not because God is here to do something. We see that Adam before the fall, when man was still okay, that he was in charge. He was able to keep the garden of Eden intact, cultivate, dress, and manage. When God gave him the assignment to name all the animals, he was able to have dominion. There was no limitation. He named all of them without repetition, without getting confused, without lacking or coming shortage of names. And when God came to mark him, whether he got it correct, he said you got everything correct. That is dominion. That is dominion. Actually, after God created man, God went to rest because he expected now the man will take charge and have dominion and rule and reign and shape the world the way God desired. So the heaven and the heavens, that is God's business. But the earth has he given to the children of men so that they can take charge. But we see that man lost that dominion a great portion of that dominion was lost. After Adam sinned, he lost that dominion and he, came, he became subject to the creation in the garden. Instead of the garden being under his command, the garden began to resist him. Instead of producing the foods and the fruits, the ground began to produce thorns and distors. Instead of the animals say yes sir. The animals now they wanted to eat him up. Ever since man has lost his dominion. The world has never been the same. 
or the foundations are out of course. I said your gods, but the cause they do not understand, they do not know, they do not understand. The foundations are out of course. But thank God that God brought Jesus Christ as the second Adam. And he was able to stand in the place of the first Adam and therefore restore man to his, from his fallen state to God's designed state of authority and dominion. Are we saying an amen to that? That is to say, as a child of God, as a believer, if you are born again, you can take dominion now that is available in Christ. And you can rule your world. You may not change everything for everybody on the face of the earth. But definitely you can rule your world by the virtue that dominion has been conferred to you through Jesus Christ. Are we saying an amen to that? We saw that, that uh, when Jesus rose again from the dead, he said, all power is given to me. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. He said, all power is given to me. And then he said unto you, unto them, wait in Jerusalem and you shall receive power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Which power were they going to receive? All the power that he received after resurrection, it was now available at Pentecost. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto all the uttermost parts of the world, of the earth. So the power, the dominion that was lost in first Adam, it is now available and attainable through Jesus Christ. Are we saying an amen to that? Hallelujah. Godliness, the master key to dominion. Somebody say godliness. Say loud that godliness, the master key to dominion. I didn't hear your voice. Let's say loud that godliness, the master key to dominion. Jesus came to restore godliness. The spiritual standing of man that he lost in the garden, in the garden of Eden. That is what Jesus came to fix. Godliness is the master key. It's not a key among. It is not one among. It is the master key to dominion. Godliness. It is more than just coming to church. Godliness is more than just being saved for 10 years. And it is a master key to the dominion we are talking about. If we are going to arise and take our place of dominion, where you can say no to wickedness, where you can speak and you see what you are saying is coming to pass, then we must operate the key of godliness. It is a master key. Somebody say master key. So it is not one among. It is the main one. Godliness. Hallelujah. When Adam who was created in the image and the likeness of God, when he lost that one, that is when now he lost his dominion. When he was no longer a spiritual man that will obey God and have the right standing with God, then he lost his dominion. His image and his likeness after God Determine how much command he will have here on earth. So it is our spirituality that commands dominion. The more spiritual a person is, the more the person will have dominion here on earth. The less a person is a spiritual person, godliness, then that person will not have dominion. He may have everything else. He may even have money, but he will not have dominion. The one we are talking about from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your spirituality decides. 
Your level of your spirituality decides how much dominion you command. How much you command. The less godly you are, the less dominion you have. The more spiritual you are, the greater command you have. Hallelujah. Did you know that this man, our father Abraham, before he became a godly person, and he was just an ordinary person, after the kind of his father, his father Terra was a worshiper of other gods. He was an ordinary person. Abraham was an ordinary person. If anything, he was under circumstances. Forces ruled over him. He was barren for 75 years. He was a poor man. He was suffering a curse. He was a small man. Before he became a godly person, before his spirituality was established, before his walk with God came into place, the man was nothing. He was a man under the forces that are in this world. But thank God, when God appeared to him and he began to walk with him and Abraham got to know God and the more he walked with him, Abraham gained dominion. Even though he was a barren man at 75, that barrenness was broken and he did not only become a father of sons, he became a father of nations. He did not only have enough food and house to live. This man was able to command wealth for generations. This man that was not a name anywhere. He became a transgenerational name. We are still talking about him today. Many years after. Muslims are talking about him. Christians are talking about him. His name became such a command. When he became a godly person and his spirituality was enhanced and he walked with God, Abraham, who appears to be a man that would have died before long, he was able to live and live many years. A very satisfied, aged man. Somebody say dominion. He did not die. He went. He was not forced to die. He was satisfied with life and he was ready to die. Then we find his son Isaac came, coming into place. Isaac also became a follower of God. In Genesis 24, we are told that he was in the bush meditating. That is deep type of prayer. And he was led by God in Genesis 26. God spoke to him and he walked with God. And Abraham became a great man. I mean Isaac, he became a great man. When everybody else was failing in farming business, the man was having dominion. There was no rain, drought everywhere, but the man was able to harvest a hundred times. That is dominion. He grew strong and was so strong that King Abimelech came and said to him, you are too much for us. Please excuse us. You will take over our land. You came just the other day. But see how you have taken over our economy. Please give us some space. Leave us. That is dominion. Succeeding where others are failing. For when men are cast down, thou shalt say there is a lifting up. Somebody say dominion. This is a man that was guided by God. Then enters Jacob. On the scene, Jacob, the son of Isaac, after labeling for 20 years to a man that was shrewd and wicked by name Laban, an idol worshiper. Then God appeared to him and Jacob began his walk with God and he was able to break the poverty, the uh, slavery, the captivity, the oppression. And he took his place and he became a great man. Hallelujah. I hope you understand that uh, to this date, the nation of Israel, the physical nation of Israel in the Middle East, its impact and influence 
in all areas as a result of their blessing they have received by their connection to God. By the way, Israel, the highest foreign income earner is tourism. And Israel, they sell nothing else but Jesus. People go there because Jesus was there. So they are selling Jesus. They are selling Jesus. Every day people are trooping there in hundreds of thousands, if not millions. They are going to see where Jesus was, where Jesus walked, and they are paying for it. And out of that, Israel is making a lot of money. These people that were able to give back to Jesus, I declare that our spirituality will be enhanced in this service. Hallelujah. Literally, when I walked in Israel, anywhere they say this is authentic site, that is a real site where Jesus did something, there was always something unique. There was always something very peculiar. Where they say this is the authentic site. Jesus was here in real, not, not imagination. There was always something. Even if it is rocks, you'll find crops and fruit growing on the rocks. Hallelujah. Somebody says spirituality. Say louder spirituality. Say louder spirituality. Now what shall we say about the man Joseph? Joseph of the Bible. This is the man who said, how can I do this and sin against my God? The man who said, I will not do this kind of a sin and sin against my God. That is godliness. That is spirituality. When he said, how can I do this and sin against my God? Shortly after. All the circumstances he went through notwithstanding. See where he ended up. In a fallen land, the man became in charge. Pharaoh said, we have no one as wise as you are. You are exceedingly wise. Nobody can beat you in this. Please take charge of Egypt. And Egypt at the point, it was the center of uh, civilization, economy, anything. It was like today's America. And Joseph, a foreigner, he was able to take over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh became a ceremonial king. And Joseph became a very executive prime minister. You could not enter Egypt if Joseph has not permitted you. There was no transaction happening anywhere without Joseph. A man who said, how can I do this and sin against my God? Genesis 39 verse 9. Somebody say godliness. Say louder godliness. Say louder godliness. Mm -hmm. What shall we say of Daniel? And his friends. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. They observed and saw. That even though we are in this kingdom. Babylonian kingdom. And we are slaves. Captives. These people the food they are eating. The king's food. Is a food that is dedicated to idols. Because before the king ate his food. They will dedicate the food first to idols. To idols. Then they are going to eat the food. That's why it was a food that defileth. The food was first of all dedicated to idols. So when you eat the food, you become defiled. And they said, we shall not defile ourselves. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He purposed in himself that I will not defile myself. I will not defile myself. And what happened later? Daniel became such a force in this Babylonian kingdom. Four kings came and went, but Daniel was still in place. Number one, there was 
uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He served in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar died. His son, Belshazzar, took over. Daniel was still serving. Then Darius the king. Then Cyrus the king. And this man, Daniel, was still in place. Governments were changing. But he still maintained his position. He was one that cannot be retrenched. You know in politics, when you get in, you come with your people. When another one comes in, he comes with his people. Daniel was such a man in command and dominion that whoever king took over, even contrary governments, they could not suck him out. They could not chase him. Somebody say dominion. Say louder dominion. You can come to a place of dominion by God that no matter the change of political change in this country, you will still be maintaining your place. I declare and declare from this day, may the dominion manifest in your life that no matter what changes happen in this country, you will still maintain your place. If you are in a particular organization, then they bring a different CEO or different management. If you are somebody that works with God, no matter the malice, no matter the evil competition, jealousy, you are haters notwithstanding. Because you are one that worked with God, they cannot remove you. They shall not be able to remove you. So godliness is at the root of continuity. Godliness is at the root of stability. Godliness is at the root of constancy. You cannot be removed. You cannot be changed. No matter who comes, you take your place. I pray that is going to be our story after now in Jesus' mighty name. This thing of rise and fall is not your portion. I say you shall not rise and fall in Jesus' mighty name. But look, that success of Daniel was rooted in his heart for God. His heart for God. I shall not defile myself. I shall not defile myself. I shall not defile myself. If the church can say so, I will not defile myself. You will see what will happen. His friends, the three of them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we shall not bow to another, uh, to another God. We shall not bow to an idol. And when they were put in the fire seven times hotter, what happened? They walked through like it was just an empty room in the fire. They did not even smell smoke. What is that dominion? Dominion that is so much that renders seven times fire hotter to be like nothing. No matter the heat that is going to be in this world, as you purpose to be one that walketh with God, you shall not feel the heat that is coming in the world. This is Patrick Karaoke coming to you, our Bishop of Great Gospel Visioners International. Our head office is in Meru, and uh, we have other branches in the country. We are so privileged and honored by God to be coming to you through this program, Lighting Your World, on MBCI TV every Friday evening from 8.30 to 9. This program has been a great blessing to many people's lives. Uh, we have received uh, people's testimonies that were healed as they watched and listened. Other people have received, received divine interventions in other areas and blessings of God. It is a blessing to join me every Friday evening, whether you're in your house, uh, in the hospital, in the prison, or even in the hotel. And we're intending to move on the next few weeks by the grace of God. This is very important. Maybe you've been wondering what has been bothering your life. You do everything humanly uh, required but you're still not succeeding, you're not still uh, having the results that you so desire. 
There are forces in the spiritual realms that are so real. They fight people, they stop people, resist people, and they overwhelm people from becoming what God desires them to become. Witchcraft, spells, demons, and, and all the forces of darkness that you cannot see, they are so real, they stop people from doing things that they are supposed to do. So this message that has been coming to you is all tailored to empower you to overcome and to set you free. I will pray with you, and you will need to give your life to Jesus, because that is very important. If you have not uh, uh, given your life to the Lord, you will need to give your life to Jesus if you have not given your life to the Lord. You cannot overcome invisible power, spiritual forces, with the power of your energy, with the strength of the flesh. You will need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I will pray with you, and I will pray for all of them that have needs, other needs in your family, in your business, or other spiritual needs that you may be having. Jesus loves you. Let me pray with you. If you're not born again, you backslide, or you want to come back, or to strengthen your faith in the Lord, you will repeat this prayer without minding your environment, who is next to you. Pray sincerely from the depth of your heart, meaningfully, because Jesus loves you. And he says, if you confess and believe in your heart, you shall be born again. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. I surrender my life to you. I believe that you sent Jesus Christ, that he may die and rise again for my salvation. I believe he is the Lord. And I accept him today as my Lord and Savior. I confess I'm born again. I am forgiven. I'm a new creation. Congratulations, you just made it to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the family of God. If you are not yet in a stable church or a church where you think you can grow, you will need to look around to the nearest church that believe in the Bible, believe in the Holy Spirit, and teach the ways of the kingdom. Congratulations once again. Would like to hear from you how you're faring on. Let me pray with those that have other kinds of needs. You're sick in your body. You can touch the place of ailment. If you can, wherever you are, whether in the hospital, in the prison, in your house, whatever you are hearing my voice at this particular moment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare healing upon the sick that are hearing my voice. Lord, I speak your healing virtue in their bodies. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity and disease. I speak the life of God in your blood, in your bones, and in your body. Receive healing in Jesus' mighty name. I declare also the touch of God upon every other areas of needs, in your business, in your family, in your children, may the Lord see you through and answer your heart's desire. May there go to be a miracle this week in your life, in Jesus' mighty name. Congratulations once again, every one of you. Thank you for listening. Would like to get a feedback from you of what God is doing in your life. Write us, text us. You can use the contacts on the screen to let us know what God has done in your life, that you may glorify God together with you. Thank you so much. Until I come back on your way, the same time, the same channel, this is Bishop Patrick Karaoke of Great Gospel Visioners International. We love you, and I'll keep on praying for you. The Lord bless you. Jesus said, the center of it all. Jesus said, the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing.